Yes. Um, and so I'm glad you're joining us today. We are really happy to have Matt with us um, to share how to unlock your personal and professional growth with mentors, sponsors, and coaches. Um, if you are not talking, I invite you to mute your microphone. Um, I will be monitoring the chat throughout this session. So if you have questions, feel free to pop those in the chat and, um, and I can share them with Matt as we're able. Um, and we will have an evaluation for this session after um, in the Event Mobi app that you can fill out and we certainly welcome your input. Um, and finally, if you uh, feel like we're boring you to tears or like not as funny as Saturday Night Live, you can leave us. We'll be sad, but um, you can uh, leave at any time and join a different session if you want. Um, so it's my honor to introduce you to Matt Nobles. Um, Matt is an initiate of the University of Florida in 2006. Um, he is a trusted advisor and member of the executive management team, driving business results through strategic development and implementation of ethics, compliance, risk management programs. Matt is a highly regarded industry thought leader, speaker, speaker, and mentor who values contributing to the online development of industry peers and colleagues. Matt has been with General Electric for more than 13 years and has a proven leadership track record working on four continents and across multiple industries. He serves currently as the Chief Compliance Officer for GE Gas Power for the Middle East, Africa, and South Asia region and is recognized as a vital business partner to the executive leadership. Matt is joining us from Dubai uh, tonight for him, today for us, um, and he's lived there since 2011 when his first assignment was to develop and implement the anti-corruption framework for GE in the Middle East region. He has a bachelor's degree in finance, um, from the University of Florida, and in his spare time, he enjoys following the financial markets, reading, and spending time with his wife and two young children. So thanks, Matt, for being with us today. We're, we're honored that you're here. Sure, a pleasure. Thank you. That was a mouthful of an introduction. I'm sorry to uh, put everybody through that. And uh, that's a high bar to set in terms of Saturday Night Live, so I don't know. We'll do what we can do. But hopefully we'll have a good conversation. I'm looking forward to uh, being here with you guys. Thank you for your time. I hope this is valuable for you. Um, this is a small group. You know, I think we have, what, 10 or so participants. So feel free from time to time to unmute yourself and jump in with a question. So there's no need to wait to the end. There's no need to be hesitant. Um, just jump in and ask a question or share a story or a suggestion or a thought or something that you think would be valuable for the other members of the, uh, the session to hear. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a couple of pages and then uh, we'll open it up for questions, right? So let me share my screen. Just let me know and you can see. I'm gonna go and get it right now. We are seeing your screen now. All okay, right. well, I'll put it that way. All right, sweetie, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. If you're not presenting or have a question, go ahead and put yourself on mute. Um, so, all right, so let's go ahead and dive in. So how to unlock your personal and professional growth with mentors, sponsors, and coaches. And we're going to talk about some definitions, some examples, um, tell a couple stories, and hopefully hear from you guys about your experiences with these three different and very distinct uh, types of roles and relationships that you can have um, with others. All right, so we'll get into it. Quickly, again, I just throw this in, you know, a bit about me. These are my kids, this is my family. So I have a wonderful wife here. This is Kelly, and I have two young kids. That's Ava, she's five, and that's Jordan, he's three. So yeah, they take up all my time when I'm not working, and uh, it's just uh, a barrel of laughs, a lot of fun. So um Let's see, here we go. So yeah, I'm from the US. I've been in Dubai for 10 years. I have 14 years of experience at GE now. I have actually recently founded an impact investment fund. So I'm very interested in ESG investing, et cetera, um, impact investing. 
Um, so I've spent you know a lot of my free time in that and starting setting up a fund, becoming a limited partner and a general partner in a few different investments over the last couple of years. Um, so that's been interesting as well. I've learned a lot about that field. I'm certified as a personal finance advisor, educator, and coach. So I'm super passionate about personal finance and financial literacy. I think that's absolutely vital. Um, and passionate about leadership and development in general. So any chance I get the opportunity to speak with university students, with uh, other professionals, uh, conferences and, and the like, I, I jump at the opportunity to have a conversation and, and to learn. So let's talk about uh, the topic at hand, which is mentors, sponsors, and coaches. And I'm gonna spend some time going through some definitions. And a lot of this is not rocket science. It's exactly maybe what you would expect, but hopefully you've never seen it laid out exactly like this. Um, in as clear and a detailed a way as we're about to uh, go through. And it helps, you know, trigger in your mind maybe some actions that you can take in, in trying to reach out to some, uh, somebody who may fit one of these uh, roles for you in your life. So a uh, question to you guys, and please feel free to unmute yourself and, and add a comment. Do the top performers in any field have the most or the least number of others guiding and supporting them? What do you guys think? The most. The most, okay. Anybody think that, that it's the least? I'll take the silence as a no. I mean, yeah, it could be basically a rhetorical question. It's the most, right? And the thing is, is I've always thought, or I've, I've frequently thought, or let's, let me rephrase. I was born in 1984 and my parents told me, Matt, you can do anything you put your mind to. You know, if you just try hard enough and you keep going, you can go to the moon, you can climb Mount Everest, you can be CEO, you can do whatever. And while I still believe that's true in many ways for, for better or worse, the truth is, as you get older, you learn that you can go fast alone and far together, right? And I'm sure you've heard that before. And if you wanna go far, if you wanna have great success in whatever it is that you're doing, in your field of expertise, in your chosen career path, um, and even in personal matters, if you wanna go far, you need to have people there supporting you. I guarantee it. You will be much more successful having people there alongside you, um, you know, to guide you, support you, mentor you, sponsor you, as we'll talk about. All of the best athletes have coaches that they work with for years. If they're number one in the world, the fastest runner, the best tennis player, the best basketball player, the best musician or whatever. Why do they need coaches and trainers? They need coaches and trainers, sponsors to keep them aligned, to keep them focused, to challenge them, to point out those areas where they're weak, where they can improve, things like that. And so even the best in the world, Olympic athletes and top performers, most certainly have people supporting them and guiding them through, through their development. So absolutely, it's, it's not about going it alone. And I've seen that personally in my own life, in my own career and in personal situations as well. So let's talk about some of these different categories. So mentor. So I'm just gonna go through some, some of this material here. So the characteristics of a mentor, this type of person serves as a guide, okay? They, they, they show you where to go. They provide experience, um, they provide advice based on their experience. So they have often and most typically been where you want to go. They are most typically older, um, not always, but most typically they've been there, done that kind of thing. They talk you through the challenges. They help you practice ideas and solutions, very practical based things based again on their experience to help get you to where you want to go. And they're focused on your development. They tell you that you can do it. They tell you that you can do it based on, again, your continued development. And so some ideas about connecting with a mentor, how to find this type of person. These are experts in your field, okay? Um, you can find so many different types of mentors just through online networking. And believe it or not, if you reach out to somebody on LinkedIn, for example, and you the, the way I do it is I reach out to somebody and somebody's posted something and it pops up in my feed and I'll say, hey, I saw that you have just done such and such or you just hit this milestone or you just presented at this conference and I thought it was excellent. I'd really love to connect, you know, for another 30 minutes and just learn more about that. 
And maybe nine times out of 10, if you write it persuasively enough, they'd be happy to spend some time with you um, and see where that goes. If there's a connection there, if there's any chemistry, then maybe you can meet again in a couple weeks or a couple months down the road. And that's fine and build a relationship over time. And if there's no connection, no chemistry, then, then hopefully it's just a 30 minute meeting. But so that's just one practical tip. Reach out to people who you've seen do things um, in your field through LinkedIn and other networking uh, opportunities. There are definitely organized mentorship programs. So if you are part of a, uh, a professional association, like CPAs or engineering or IT or finance or, or the arts uh, have these programs, um, certainly there are organized programs you know, sponsored by those entities. Um, and you can join up, you can sign up to be a mentee um, and hopefully find somebody who is, has all these characteristics on the left-hand side, who's willing and interested to invest in a relationship uh, with a mentee. So these can be informal periodic connections. The worst thing to do is to try to force it. Uh, so don't try to do, you know, make it a weekly thing where it becomes a chore for the mentor. That's absolutely, you know, that's not going to work. The relationship is going to break down very quickly. Um, and it's not going to be productive at all. You want to make it, in my view, um, casual, but, but engaging. So on this next bullet point, come prepared with specific questions and ideas for discussion. As a mentee, I think the onus is on you, on us, on me, if I was a mentee, to come prepared to a meeting to ask very specific and pointed questions about a challenge that I'm dealing with. So I would come with a list of three to five questions. I would explain the scenario and hopefully the mentor would be able then to guide me through some thoughts and advice and then some challenges about, hey, did you consider this? What about this? Go ahead and try this. And that mentor would give me some advice and give me some tips about something to do. And then you have to follow up on it. You have to actually execute on those things, show that you're intent about um, trying to improve and develop, and then come back to the next meeting with feedback about how that went for you. Did it work? Did it not work? What did you learn from that experience? So put in the effort to show progress over time. So I think if you do those things with a mentor, hopefully that relationship will build over time um, and that it will be fruitful for both the mentor and the mentee and you'll both get something out of it. So switching over to talking about a few different examples of some mentors that we're all, you know, all familiar with. So here we go from, uh, from the movies. Where should we begin? I mean, we have Luke Skywalker and Yoda classic mentor-mentee relationship, Daniel-san, Mr. Miyagi, we have Agent J and Agent K, and Gandalf and, uh, and the Hobbit here. So, I mean, clearly examples of relationships between a mentee and a mentor, uh, somebody who's been there, done that, has the experience, um, and is able to guide, um, you know, this, these people through these challenges that they, that they experience. I think somebody raised their hand, so I don't know if Rachel, if you have any comments or questions. Before you moved on to like the examples of mentee mentor relationships, I was just yeah. curious if you had um, other specific pragmatic ways of how we make it worth the mentor's time to mentor us uh, in terms of win-win or how do we like not be obnoxious because we want sure. them to develop chemistry or appreciate their chemistry and we can besides having our pen and paper ready to hear what they have to say and bringing specific problems, respecting their time, is there anything else that you'd offer? Yeah, I mean, everything you said is absolutely correct. You need to do those things. Um, respect their time, come prepared, be ready. And I think if, if there is any chemistry at all, you know, if you have a good relationship with this person, if you show progress over time and you're actually getting better at whatever it is you're targeting at, the mentor, I believe, should show some pride and, and joy just in the pure watching you get better and succeed. And so I think there's a lot to that. I think if the relationship, the race, relationship will often stall if, if you see that there's no progress, if there's no value in that half hour or 45 minute meeting on a monthly basis and there's no progress being made, then the mentor will quickly fall out. But if you're really showing progress, if you're executing on those targets and you're doing it well and you're getting better, 
I, I think most often the mentor will continue to meet with you um, if you have you know, some basic chemistry together. So it sounds like you're almost suggesting that we make sure that we give like status updates to our mentor to be like, hey, thanks so much for that advice. Yeah. I executed it here. And there's some like inherent satisfaction. Definitely. Exactly as you said. So I think, I mean, certainly you need to give feedback on the last session. Otherwise, it just goes into a black box, into the void, and the mentor is left wondering whether or not anything that was said in the last session or previous sessions had an impact or, or you know, an outcome for you. So certainly, you need, there needs to be a closed loop. It needs to come back to uh, the conversation previously, um, and then that will then guide you know, next steps. Hey, Matt, Kiki had another question. Um, yeah. She asked, do you introduce the idea of establishing a formal mentor title expectation, or do you just build relationships with someone you personally consider a mentor, though they might not know that you consider them a mentor? Yeah, I think both. Um, I mean, I've done formal mentorship programs in GE, um, both on the mentor and the mentee side. Um, some work, some don't. Again, it depends on chemistry and if it feels forced or not. Um, I think a great way to do it is, is the secondary option. What was you know Kiki raised is just find somebody who is a well-respected um, person that you look up to based on their experience and you know maybe their personality and the the, the character that they have, um, and, and and spend some time with them. You know uh, if you can and get to know them and just, it, it doesn't have to be formal and you never have to call them a mentor. And perhaps you don't want to use that word, you know, cause it makes it awkward then, you know, then it's like, oh, I'm, I'm your mentor. You don't have to do that. It depends on the situation and, and the relationship that you have with them, right? So you just have to be the judge of that. Great, thank these, you. Yeah, these are good questions, this is perfect. Anything else on, on mentor piece? All right, cool. So we'll move on. I mean, you know, some examples which we kind of talked through. So clearly the point here is that these people are serving as mentors on the basis of their prior experience, maybe wisdom, we can say, um, and are guiding these others, other individuals through their journey kind of thing. And that happens in real life, in, in business, in personal life, um, careers, uh, everything. So let's move to sponsors. Uh, sponsors are, are much different than mentors, a totally different kind of category and role, um, as we'll talk about. So the characteristics, these people serve as a cheerleader for you in whatever it is that you're doing. They speak about you publicly to your peers, to your seniors, your manager, your one over one, the most senior management, um, or out in the public, they speak about you. Um, you know, in, in your field of expertise, or if it's really public in the media, etc. You know, they, they are your sponsor and they speak about you publicly. They open doors and opportunities for you. They are focused on your promotion and they tell others that you can do it. So mentors tell you that you can do it. Sponsors tell other people that you can do it. So that's the difference there. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, these people are extremely valuable, as you can see. I mean, who wouldn't want to have somebody being their cheer cheerleader, speaking about you publicly, opening doors and opportunities for you, and focused on your promotion? I think this, the role of sponsor is undervalued uh, or under-talked about, you know? Um, we often talk about mentors and coaches. Sponsorship is often, it is frequently less talked about, but I think more valuable, as, as or more valuable. Um, so how do you find a sponsor? Connecting with the sponsor. Do your best at work or in your field, always. I mean, always, always, always do your best. If you're not performing at your best, people notice. And a sponsor wants to be behind somebody who is a rocket ship, who is a rising star. Um, and, and they want to, you know, sponsor somebody and attach their name and their credibility um, to somebody who they believe, you know, is really going to put in the effort. Also, having a positive attitude really counts. I mean, people can tell 
about you know where you're going to go in a company or a field or an industry based on on how well you interact with with your peers and and your colleagues and and the management and etc um so i'm always you know speaking from a perspective of multinational corporation but in in any field you know it, it matters how you interact with people um in in your area so be someone who a sponsor would be proud to stand behind i think i said that and you want to make others look good you want to make other people around you look good so it's not only about you it's not only about me it's about the team so whenever you have the opportunity to highlight the work that a great uh the great work that a peer has done or a colleague or even your manager or if you want to make your manager shine then they're going to be happy about that i mean the, i mean it's not going to be a bad thing right and so they're going to be excited and enthusiastic then to again act as a sponsor on your behalf on the basis of, of your ability to work together with others um, so these are how ways that you can um, best set yourself up to connect with the sponsor that can find you. So I see maybe there's a question or two. I, I think I'm the only one with my hand raised. Um, can you speak to this? So this is not really, this might not be an easy question to ask. So maybe we can, you can percolate on it and yeah. on to it later. But I have run into the experience where we'll call them a sponsor for the sake of this, talking to them or like interacting with them is kind of like crawling over broken glass. You're like, oh man, everything you say to me, it really hurts and you're right. But the way you communicate and the way you go about like advocating for me, I, I, I really don't like it. So mm. I can sense that either I need to like uh, mature in my ability to take criticism or to expand my ability to communicate with different kinds of people. And, and so I feel like somewhere there's a balance between, I really cringe whenever your name pops up in an email and mm. I appreciate like the cost to benefit ratio is, is good enough now. Maybe that's not long-term. So like I said, it's not really a clear question, but do you have any kind of knee-jerk response to those situations or you could speak into it actually i don't that's i mean interesting i've never personally had that kind of situation um so i mean i'd be happy to take it offline and we can further discuss and maybe you could share more i'd be happy to learn more and we can talk about it that'd be fine but i can just share that you know certainly you're going to have people both peers and seniors who give you feedback uh, and who give you challenging feedback, and maybe it's not what you want to hear. Um, and if they have your best interest in, in heart, at heart, um, then you know we've all heard that like feedback is a gift, right? Because if we receive it that way, then we can make a change, we can learn something from it, and hopefully improve. Mm -hmm. If it's given in in any kind of malicious way or with ill intent, then you can kind of you know in one ear out the other kind of thing I mean, you can still learn from it because other people's perception is their reality so you can kind of think about that and think of is that one person's view or is this other people think the same way as well so those are the kind of things that, that i think about feedback um, but certainly you always want to carefully consider what they have to say and do your best to improve um, but again i don't know if that answers your question uh i'd be happy to take it offline to chat more about it I'll send you a LinkedIn and then maybe we can connect later. Sure. Yeah, I'd be glad to. That'd be fine. Cool. So yeah, I mean, finding a sponsor um, can be tough, but once you find one and once you, you, and you feel it in your bones, like you just know that there's this one or two people who love the work that you do and they are willing to, if you continue to operate and execute with excellence, then they will continue to sponsor you. And uh, so once you find those people, and if those people are well-respected in your organization, I mean, this is, this is gold, right? So you want to uh, do your best, do your best work always, all these things, um, and then find a sponsor. And hopefully that, that'll be valuable for you. So talking about some sponsorship examples, boom, Jerry Maguire. 
I mean, I watched this movie again last night just to make sure that this example made sense. And it is an awesome movie if you haven't seen it recently. I mean, show me the money, right? <laughs> help me, help you. It's so good. And uh, I mean, this guy, clearly he's, he's a manager, right? He's a sports manager, an agent. Uh, he gets paid to do this. But I mean, if you see in the movie, he works so hard to be a sponsor, uh, you know, for this guy, for Tidwell. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is the kind of person you want behind you who gives their, their heart and soul. If you continue to execute well and you, you uh, do well, then you have somebody in your, in your corner uh, pushing for you. On the bottom, I mean, I'm sure you guys know who all four of these individuals are. These are the Beatles, but I don't know if you know who that gentleman is in the middle. His name is Brian Epstein. He is um, not the very first, he's the second, but he's really the most important uh, manager that the Beatles had in the early days uh, because he really took them from a know-nothing uh, band that was playing in you know, the pubs in the UK um, to be international stars. Um, so he was their manager for, I think, six or seven years in the early years um, and really changed as part of their image, you know, got them a whole bunch more clean cut, put them in suits, um, you know, started them on the, the major international uh, tours, et cetera, and really promoted them and helped them to become the superstars, you know, that we all know them to be today. So he's often considered to be the fifth Beatle, and you can check this out online yourself. So Brian Epstein, the fifth Beatle um, that none of us know about. But, uh, but yeah, so these are promoters, these are sponsors of these individuals and groups that really made a huge difference in their lives. And these are just some examples. Matt, we have another question. Um, yeah. how, how can you build a sponsor relationship outside of your media supervisor? Or is it most common to try to nurture the relationship you have with your supervisor? I mean, the supervisor is probably maybe the most immediate kind of come to mind, but it certainly doesn't have to be your immediate boss. Um, it can be somebody in the same, so if you work for a large organization, it could be somebody in the organization who you collaborate with. Um, so, I mean, right now I'm in legal and compliance, but I collaborate with every other function, be it supply chain, HR, IT, um, finance, uh, et cetera. And we have senior leaders in all of those functions. Um, and if those people love the work that I'm doing and, you know, we do projects and initiatives together, then they can certainly be sponsors as well. And similarly, I'm sure you can think of examples in your organization or your industry. So it doesn't have to be your direct manager. And often I would say, I mean, and it is not rocket science, right? You guys know this, but if you have somebody who is not directly overseeing you, um, but just also notices the work that you're doing, perhaps that's all the more credible, you know, that, that their word is even more interesting because they have less skin in the game. They don't oversee you every day, but they still um, love the work you're doing. And so if they, if they start sponsoring you, I mean, that, that's excellent um, based on your name, that, the, the name that you've uh, built up over time based on your work. So hopefully that makes sense. Thank you. Any other Questions or comments? No? All right, let's keep going. How are we doing on time? Okay. All right, so let's just compare uh, and contrast mentors versus sponsors. So mentors, um, they do not have to work in your organization versus sponsors. They generally do work with you. Um, mentors provide expert guidance and advice. Sponsors can provide guidance or advice, but they don't always. Um, Often they just, you know, kind of sponsor the work and, and advocate on behalf of the work that you're doing. Mentors can advocate for you, but um, at work, but not necessarily. Um, sponsors actively advocate for you, help you advance or develop in your career. A mentor connects you with other people who have faced similar challenges and succeeded. A sponsor includes you in their professional network and they introduce you to key people. So that's going back to opening doors and opportunities for you. Um, so that's what a sponsor does is they, they pull you in they add you to the network, they add you to the conversation. Mentors serve as a professional role model. They want you to perform your best. The sponsor is personally invested in your professional advancement and seeing you go as high as you can go. So for the mentor, you actively seek and engage mentors. 
And with a sponsor, you can actively attract sponsors uh, based on your work. So hopefully that helps, you know, compare and contrast. Let's keep rolling. Coaches, coach characteristics. So a coach, in my view, is extremely valuable. Um, they can be paid or unpaid, and we'll talk about that. But um, I think often for people, and this goes back before I just go into this, but this goes back to what I was saying at the very outset, you know, the first screen, you know, do you think the best performers um, have the most or the least people supporting them? You know, it's got to be the most and don't go it alone kind of thing. So we talked about mentors and sponsors. You need those people, but coaches as well. Um, and I'm, I'm just turning my own life, you know, turning into this and thinking about this. Who can I identify to be a coach? I don't cur currently have an executive coach that I pay, but I'm certainly thinking about it. Um, I'm looking for the right person. And, uh, you know, if I find that person, if there's great chemistry um, and if they have a lot of value to add, then, then I would pay for their time. Um, I would certainly hand over cold, hard cash if they're really challenging me to think in different ways um, and to get better. And I think that would be uh, money well spent. So, I mean, it's just something to think about. So characteristics, they help you identify your overall vision and your specific goals. So, I mean, what are you trying to achieve? What, what are you doing here kind of thing, either in work or in life? Um, different areas, right? They help you assess your strengths and weaknesses. There are lots of tools to do this online, etc. cetera. Um, lots of different frameworks. I know that, you know, we just did the true colors here uh, through ODK, this conference, which is awesome. Uh, hopefully you participated in that and learned something about yourself uh, through that exercise. Uh, but coaches can certainly do that through watching you and, um, you know, assessing your, your, the way you perform. They break um, breaks focus areas into concrete tasks to be completed within a specified time. So this is very helpful. I'm sure all of you know about SMART goals, right? Specific, manageable, actionable, realistic, and time bound. Um, so they they help break all this down for you um, and make it into concrete tasks, right? So rather than trying to climb Mount Everest, well, how about you start? you know, first by, you know, climbing a smaller mountain, you know, or doing a super long hike or, you know, preparing for the cold temperatures, you know, with X goal or X challenge. They're breaking it down into much smaller bite-sized tasks that either you can do or not do, you know, and how, how well you perform on those and then you can readjust, etc. So they provide a very structured approach to tackle specific obstacles, as I just gave the example. And certainly they challenge you to grow. So I think one of the main things is these, you know, near the bottom two bullet points, really they help take a very large task that you don't know where to go, you don't know what to do, and they break it down into specific steps and actions that concrete tasks that you need to perform in order to get to your ultimate goal. So connecting with a coach, um, it's usually a more formal relationship that you actively seek. Uh, so as compared to a mentor, so we're not talking about mentors, we're talking about coaches. It's a more formal relationship that you actively seek. You need to find a coach with the right blend of experience, style, motivational qualities, and skills. Um, you know, you need to prepare your current thoughts on specific areas where you need support. So similar to a mentor where you come with the challenge, you come with a set you know, of questions or things that you know that you need to improve on. Um, so you need to come prepared because otherwise you're going to waste your own time. You're going to waste the coach's time. If you're paying for it, you're going to waste your money. Um, so you need to come prepared to those sessions uh, with the coach and you need to be teachable. You must be teachable and take action. Um, you know, high performing people know that they still have a lot to learn and that they still have you know, miles to go. Um, even if you are at the top of your field, you can always get better, right? You can always improve. Um, and so be teachable, learn, be humble, and take action based on the feedback that you hear from your coaches. So let me pause there for thoughts and comments. While you're developing the relationship with somebody that you're exploring as a coach, Hmm. maybe there's it's it might not be appropriate to be like hey will you 
coach me, I'll give you money. Um, and is there like a warm, like a warm lead or a transitional kind of appropriate professional way to like express appreciation like that you could offer? Yeah, I mean, I have to be honest and, and, and not just like make something up because I don't have a specific coach yet. Um, so I wouldn't be able to speak from experience, but what I, what I do know is that, for example, executive life and health coaches uh, or coaches in a specific field, you know, are, are they're professional coaches oftenly, uh, often, um, that's what they do as a uh, profession. Um, and so, so they, they know, they, they know how to manage that relationship. If, if you are coming to them to, to build a relationship um, you know, you'll have one or two engagements with them to see if that there is chemistry, if there's, if you're the right coachee for them, um, you know, if you're going to be teachable, humble and take action and, and if they have the right experience qualities. So, you know, that will happen. Um, and then quickly, I think it'll move to a discussion of, you know, what do you want to get out of this? How are we going to structure this? Um, you know, what, what does this relationship look like? And then, of course, I think if, if they're a professional coach and that's what they do as a career, then certainly money will come into it, which is fine. Um, that's how it should be. Um, and so, so, yeah, I think that's how it would naturally develop. We just got another question about um, certification. Are there um, specific certifications you look for with a coach? Well, I mean, for executive coaches, to my knowledge, the, the, the gold standard is the ICF, um, the International Coaches Federation. Um, so they, and then even within ICF, there are multiple levels of uh, coaches. Um, I think, I don't even know, I think it's like a basic or master level and, and different levels within ICF. But yeah, look for, look for a certification. Um, I think ICF is the best one. There may be others as well. You can see um, you know, how well those certifications are, are ranked or, or um, you know, revered, I guess. So, so yeah, I think, it, I think it's worth having somebody who's gone through a training program, um, who has many hours under their belt, experience other clients that they have worked with, um, you know, unless they are an amazing coach right off the bat, everybody gets better at what they do based on experience, right? And so you would like to work with a coach who, who has some experience um, and has really coached some people to greatness before, um, work with the best coaches you can, so, or you can afford. So, so that's the kind of thing. So yeah, I think certification is valuable and, um, you know, you can do your research on that. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay. Yeah. So that's about coaches. Um, some examples. So I took two from the sports world and an executive kind of coach. So I mean, everybody knows who Michael Jordan is, but I hope you know who Phil Jackson is. Um, you know, Phil Jackson, coach of the Chicago Bulls for many years, um, coached them, that team, uh, to many, many national championships. I think it was five. Um, maybe you can correct me. Um, but I mean, they just, they, they were dominant, right? Um, six. And it, six, there you go. Thank you. Six national championships. And so clearly, I mean, Michael and Scottie Pippen and, and all these guys, right? Dennis Rodman, like amazing. But Phil Jackson is the coach, you know, and he trained them and he put them together and he put the team together and, and he challenged them to be their best. And, uh, you know, a great example. In the middle, we have Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. And I know that there's controversy around Bill and uh, different things that have happened, et cetera. But I mean, there's no doubt that together these guys and the whole team have won, you know, again, many national championships. I don't know how many, um, but are, are a well-regarded pair and team together. And, uh, you know, they make each other better, kind of iron sharpens iron kind of thing. And on the right-hand side, everybody knows who Tony Robbins is, um, standing there next to Obama. And it's well known that Tony Robbins has coached, you know, presidents, including Bill Clinton and others, um, and many celebrities and et cetera. I've never personally been to a Tony Robbins event, but I hear they're just kind of life-changing, you know, summit kind of experiences. I know is his, his most, the intro one is UPW, Unleash the Power Within, 
Um, and so, yeah, I'm curious to, to attend that kind of thing and to learn from, from his motivational style, his challenges. Um, so yeah, these are examples of coaches who coach people to greatness, even though, you know, we got Michael Jordan, Tom Brady and Obama, they can learn from other people. They are performing at the top, the very top of their field. Um, but they can learn from others. And I think being humble and being teachable and taking action um, and learning from others is, is, a, is a valuable trait to have. And that's what you, know, you can do with a coach. Questions, comments? Cool. So let's just you know, compare and contrast mentors versus coaches. Um, I didn't compare and contrast against sponsors because I think they're very different. But mentors versus coaches. <clears throat> so mentor is development and capabilities focused. Coach, much more task and performance focused, much more concrete. A mentor can be long term for a fluid time frame. It can go in and out. The next bullet, unstructured and informal on an as needed basis. So it's kind of, you know, it's a relationship you have over time and they mentor you and they come in and out of your life. A coach, it's for a defined term, a specified time frame. It's structured. There's a formal commitment there. Um, there's an expectation on both sides uh, and the coach and coachy relationship, et cetera. Mentor is focused on sharing experience and expertise to support your development. A coach is focused on helping you achieve a very specific outcome. You need to have a goal in mind. Um, don't go to a coach if you don't have a goal or a target that you want to achieve, because that's going to be one of the very first sessions that you have with the coach. If you go in unprepared, they're going to say, you know, what, what are you here for? You know, why are we talking? You know, what, what do you want to do? Who are you? What are your goals? What are you, what are your values? What do you, you know, what do you want to achieve uh, with the time and the resources that you have? So go in, prepare, you know, thinking about that with some ideas um, and they can help you refine that. Mentors usually volunteer based and coaches are often compensated. So mentors help you grow and develop and coaches help you achieve objectives. So hopefully that's clear in terms of very, very distinctly delineating, you know, the different types of roles that mentors versus coaches can play. By the way, I'm happy to send this deck uh, to anybody, this pitch, um, so you can have it. Um, hopefully it'll be valuable for you. You can refer back to it at any time. So just reach out. Um, or we can distribute it through ODK or whatever the best method is. Matt, if you send it to us, we can post it right in Event Mobi so that they can um, look there. Perfect. So we, you don't have to be bombarded by emails. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, I'll send it as a PDF and you can post it up and uh, share it with everybody. But by the way, also, like I'm happy to connect with anybody on LinkedIn and whatever and, and have further conversations as well. So please do reach out. Um, so let's... Uh, Keep going and wrap it up. So a quick summary. Mentors provide active guidance, okay? Active, actively guiding you towards thinking about your values and your goals and where you want to go and how to be the best you can in your field or your area or even in your personal life. Sponsors provide active promotion. They are in your corner. They are cheering for you if you're doing your best work and they are there to help you uh, get to the highest that you can. Um, so they're there to support you in that. And coaches are about actively challenging you on a specific goal or a specific task, um, again, to help you perform your best. So very different, um, distinct roles and distinct outcomes that each of these relationships um, you know, can have for you in your life. So I hope this has been helpful, um, you know. So here's the challenge, here's the takeaway. In the next 90 days, I need you to find just one of the following and commit to building the relationship, either a mentor, a sponsor, or a coach. So make that commitment to yourself, please. Give yourself three months, but start now. In the next 90 days, you need to find either just one mentor, one sponsor, or one coach um, and start building that relationship. And I hope that it'll be value add for you in your life. And I'm, I'm certain if you do have the chemistry, if you do connect, if you follow through um, and you do your best, I mean, I think, you know, one of these will certainly help you grow either personally or professionally. Um, so really that, that's it from my side. So I'm glad to have a conversation about 
anything we've talked about so far. Thank you, Matt. This has been very helpful and informative, um, certainly for me and I'm sure for others as well. Great. Does anyone have any questions for Matt while we have him? Well, it sure is nice having you. I, um, I appreciate you sure. being with us. Sure. Yeah, I know we are got still, you know, a few minutes, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I hope this has um, been valuable for you. Like I said, I'll share the materials. Um, feel free to reach out at any time. Um, and I think that having these people on your side, you know, working with you um, can only accelerate your growth. Personally, professionally, um, it's, not, it's not a waste of time. It's worth building relationships. It's worth, um, you know, having these people uh, work with you and, and hopefully, you know, they can help you reach greater heights. So that's the goal. So hopefully this was good. Um, thank you everybody for the comments and the questions, the people who chimed in. It was my pleasure to, to chat with you guys. I reach out at any time. And uh, thank you to ODK for organizing this conference um, and just giving us the opportunity to connect, connect remotely. I know everybody's, you know, either working or, um, from home, et cetera. So it's been challenging for all of us, but thank you to ODK for doing this virtually uh, for everyone. I'm glad to be able to connect from Dubai, for example. So with that, I think somebody raised their hand. There's a question. Yeah, I did. Thank you, Matthew, for answering all the other questions I had and Katie for translating them as I was chatting them. But one final question I had was around like, how do you know when it's time to end a relationship or transition it? So I think like I run a mentor program to my day job and that's oftentimes like we don't give any thought to how relationships end or if they continue and organically what that means. So I yeah. was wondering if you had thoughts on that. Yeah. Well, I think if it's an, it's a, if it's a formal mentorship program, it should be time bound. Um, <clears throat> I think that should be an expectation going in to the program, both for the mentor and the mentee. Um, if it's a formal uh, program, so therefore there's expectations set and everybody is clear on it from the beginning. Um, so there, there's no confusion, you know, come several weeks or several months down the road. Um, hopefully that that relationship has been valuable. Some, you know, everything's come out of it well and there's been some growth that's happened. Um, but if it's an informal thing, then those, you know, relationships can last for years, for a lifetime. Um, but yeah, if you run a program, I think just set some time some time frame around it in the beginning that gives clarity to everybody. Yeah, we definitely do that. And I think to your point about organic relationships, I do wonder about like, how can you evaluate too, if like a mentor is the same, like, or do they continue to be a good mentor for you? Like, how do you continue to assess that fit? And if they're not the right fit, like how would you go about pursuing the like closure of that relationship, I suppose? Um, that's a tough question. I think it's a good one. I mean, I think that as we, as I mature as an individual and get older and wiser and more experienced, you know, hopefully I continue to develop my EQ as well and just be able to understand how the relationship is developing with different people and the strength of it, how often we need to connect, um, or not connect, um, the quality of the conversation that we have when we do, uh, connect um, either in person or via email sometimes just writing back and forth um, or on a call or, or a video call or something like that so so I don't know if I have a perfect answer but but hopefully you're able to sense that kind of thing and hopefully it's not an awkward end to it and it's not just left hanging um, but there is some kind of particularly if, it, if it's a good relationship you don't have to ever resolve it you know the things people people get out of touch and as long as there's no bridges burned, you can go back to somebody, and I know you probably have experienced this in your life, go back to somebody five years later and pick up the ball right where you, you left it, you know, and have a conversation. Um, so I don't think that's not, I think that's normal. You know, I think that's fine. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Anything else? These are great questions. And if the ODK National Office can assist any of you in, in finding mentors or establishing relationships with sponsors or coaches, we will certainly do our best. We have 
about 325,000 living members of ODK. Mm -hmm. So there are probably people in your field and in your part of the world um, should you need help finding them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, certainly lean on ODK to uh, the network. And then like you said, the alumni, I think is really valuable. And Matt, I think you're coming to us, uh, joining this conference from the absolute farthest. You are, our, <laughs> you get that award today. Awesome. We win the prize. <laughs> no, but it's my pleasure. I mean, like we were saying earlier, you know, if the conference was held in person in Lexington, there would be no chance that I would have the opportunity to join. But somehow, you know, with this, uh, you know, all, everything online, it's a great opportunity to, to do that and do it internationally as well. So this has been great. Thank you. Cool. So yeah, I won't belabor the point. We can end it there. And uh, it's been my pleasure. And uh, look forward to connecting with you guys. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks so much. See you later, guys.